Hey guys, good to see you back at the house. I have something cool planned today. A little bit more technical, a little bit more procedural. Today, we're gonna taste three different Costa Ricas, uh, all Tarazus, and one other that I'm really excited about, that Ethiopia. We're gonna try that too. So we've got four coffees in total, and I'm just gonna take you along um, for a ride with my procedure for how I do comparative tasting. So, Let's get to it. We're gonna start brewing. I standardize everything on V60 when I'm doing these comparative tastings. 25 gram brews, 202 degrees. You'll see me, we'll talk about it. Let's get to brewing. <clears throat> so this is my buddy. He's here to test some Costa Rica and some Ethiopia with us today. We're primarily focusing on the Costa Rica, like I said earlier. But I wanted to show you guys uh, this coffee log book that I use. This is a book that I've had for a little while now. The coffee log book is really useful for me. It's got things like uh, the coffee name, if it's got a name from the producer. You can write the producer in. These are all labels here that you can fill in yourself. The country, the region, the brew methods, and then you can even get down to taste notes and you're, you can write in your own notes. And then it's got kind of a coffee wheel here that you can fill in a uh, floral, citrus, spicy, earthy, cocoa, nutty, smoky, berry. Uh, and then I just kind of plot the points and fill it in and gives you a nice visual. Anyway, there's lots of these out there. They all kind of look a little different depending on where you get them from. If I can find the one I used or one very similar, I'll link it down below. But I'll be using this today to to help myself determine what's best for this Costa Rica and we're going to analyze this Ethiopia Saidamo as well and do the same thing. I have already tested these Costa Ricas. The original one that I did um, tasted a little bit underdeveloped to me so this is why we did uh, two more roasts that are a little bit more developed uh, and now all of them have had proper time to rest. They should be kind of at a baseline for each other to do a comparative tasting. That's what we're going to do. I'm gonna go start brewing. Um, we are standardizing on V60, 202 degrees, 25 gram brews, one to 16 ratio. This is something I do every single time and I try to change it as little as possible because I'm always kind of comparing against things I've had recently. So let's do it. So we're gonna start from the lower weight loss profile and just move our way up. Uh, this is the original one that we both had together the first day, or the day after I roasted this one, I believe, right? Yeah. 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 Um, okay, and if I look back on my notes, that was on the 13th, today is the 20th. So it's been seven days, perfect. Uh, that's great, actually. <clears throat> so about this bean, this is a 1200 to 1900 meter. Um, so that puts it in a weird range because 1200 is kind of low, 1900 is kind of high. So it has potential to be delicate or fruity or earthy and all these different things. So you really have to be careful about how you taste these and how you describe them. And that's what we're gonna try and do. Now, the day one profile that I gave it was, or that we both gave it was that it was kind of limey. It tasted kind of limey, a little bit citrusy, light in body, uh, had a light cocoa taste to it. Um, and then my notes for me was to maybe perhaps roast it slightly darker, that's what I did. But these profiles change over time as coffees degas, um, they can taste a little different, taste more distinctive. We often say they taste less muddy over time. That's to say that you can more easily tell what things actually taste like. When the carbon dioxide leaves the beans, there's just more there that's actually uh, easier to pick up on. So. Let's taste it again, and it's the 13.8% roast profile. Give it a little swirl. Yeah, 
And we'll start with the aromatics. Still very hot anyway. You know, the beans smelled a little undeveloped, but this smells not that way. Yeah, it smells a little bit more complete. A little more, yeah. yeah. Just a little bit more. Um, I would say kind of a caramel sweetness smell to it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> a little caramel, yeah. Potentially still limey. I can kind of smell it's maybe riding that fence. Definitely more distinctive than day one. Yep, yep. It's pretty pleasant, actually. Yeah, it's not too bad. It has that lime is, it's there. I would say the lime is more subtle than it was. Right. And like the cocoa caramel thing is a little more pronounced. The balance shifted. Yeah, actually, no. <laughs> For a washed processed bean, it's not too out of the ordinary, um, but it is still kind of in that delicate, sort of light body still kind of thing going on. Although with all that, it still seems <laughs> like it's on the underdeveloped, it's... Yeah, it's like on the line. It's not right? reaching its potential. Right. It's it's acceptable. I would agree. Yeah, I would, dr actually I would drink it and I, I'd say it's a little more than acceptable for me personally. Right, right. That's being but, probably <clears throat> picky. Yeah, picky. In a, in, very yeah. picky in a sense, but. Yeah, but we have to be like, cause we yeah. have to really detect the changes in nuance here. Yeah. More cocoa. And that extra cocoa car caramel uh, flavor that is coming through, that helps it from the day one version where it was just, again, nothing really going on. Right. Even though the day one had a little bit more lime, which was pleasant. Um, this helps round it out. Yeah. And we'll take our time here because as the coffee's cool, you get to typically taste a little bit more range of its flavor. The acidity um, kind of opens up, allows you to taste more of the flavor uh, and sweetness. So we'll give it that time it needs before we dump and get the new one going. Um, so let's talk about the wheel here. Uh, it, on the previous day, which we didn't even do the wheel on the previous day. Um, so let's go through it. So how uh, we're gonna start with floral. Uh, I would say it's in there, mm -hmm. probably like up a third of the way or so. Yeah, it's yeah. not super floral, but it's right. there. Right. Uh, we'll put it in there. Citrus. Um, I would still say it's kind of there because the limey is it's there. It's there. It's mixed with the floral. I would say about the same, right? With floral. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, spicy? No. 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 Not at all. Uh, earthy. Um, maybe like one notch up above spicy, right? Like, yeah. not not no. nothing, but right, right. Yeah. Half a step up. Cocoa. It's like pretty good. Pretty up there. Yeah, I'm actually surprised because I didn't really remember that at all from the day right. one version. That's, it's completely different though. Yeah, yeah, so, so I'll put it. It's in the middle, medium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nutty, probably a not, little under that, but not, again, not, not like nothing, uh, right? Like It's more cocoa. Yeah, more, yeah, for sure, more. I don't really know if. Um, yeah, so nutty, maybe not so much. The cocoa is prevalent. And maybe what I was tasting in nuttiness earlier in the week was more like the caramel trying to develop mm -hmm. still. So we'll pull it down. Smoky, um, no, right? No, it's, it's no more the floral, I think, that's yeah. taking the. Okay, so we filled out the wheel and I'm just gonna connect the dots here. And oh, wait, we missed berry. Berry, not really, right? I mean, the sweetness is in the cocoa caramel thing. I mean, there is that that lime. But that's but in the citrus, citrus side. The citrus. Yeah, so I'm okay. gonna say no berry, okay. really. And how would you describe the difference between citrus and berry? So we talk about the kinds of berries we think about. Red berry is pretty common, uh, like whiny, or you can go into like blueberry, strawberry. How fruity does it get? Mm -hmm. Where does that fruitiness lie? And I think all the fruitiness, if there is any, lies in the lime. Yeah, that's so I would yeah, say there's no true. berry. Yeah. So we'll connect that, and that's our little graphy thing here. And I just kind of like to fill it in, help the visual. Not that it really provides me a whole lot of info, but 
it's kind of cool when you fill the book up and you've got these cool little graphs of just what your coffee tasted like. Your coffee coloring book. Yeah. Um, okay, good. We're gonna continue to taste it a little bit before we make the next one here. Um, so I said less limey, caramel, more cocoa. How is the acidity level to you? I would say it's like a little smoother than average. Yeah, I'm not... Uh, I would say it's not very acidic. No, no. Yeah. Right. I would say if I wrote average, I would think maybe not quite, right? Like smoother than yeah, average. Yeah, I think it's some of the, the floral that gives some of right. the, that bitterness. There's a little grassy. complexity yeah, involved, that, but I wouldn't but say it's, like from a drinking it perspective. Right. There's no no smokiness, nothing that's right. Gonna, if someone yeah. asked me, is it very acidic? I would say not at all, really. No. Yeah. yeah. So very. I would say I was relatively smooth. The light body and that. Yeah. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Costa Rica, um, they're a pretty big producer for some nicer coffees, and we've talked about honey process before on this channel. Um, I'm a big fan of honey processed coffees. I've had a Costa Rica honey process um, that actually was sourced by Owl Eye Coffee Roasters in Cadillac here in Michigan. And those guys are awesome. Aaron and Jen, shout out to you guys. Um, that was a great coffee that I got to roast myself and compare um, against some other honey processes that I've done. And it was just wild and fruity. The wash process is much more tame as to be expected. But this is also, um, El Conquistador is the producer here for this Terrazzo. The Terrazzo is the region. So we talk about the, the country, Costa Rica, Terrazzo, the region, and the producer being El Conquistador in this case. So the El Conquistador part is important for me because there's a lot of other Terrazzos out there. So I have to keep track of who I'm getting these coffees from, remembering what they're like, which is why we write this stuff down. And when we talk about how acidic it is and what kind of flavor profiles and the the altitude and and my roast profiles all these little markers are super helpful identifiers for me let's say next year i want to start looking at costa ricas again i can go back look at which ones i've had and determine if i want to buy any of those again that's why this is important um so light in body i would say yeah definitely lighter in yeah. body but it's not quite tea light no it's above that yeah, I would say overall pretty pleasant. I would say on day seven, it was acceptable, yeah. Yeah, and that's, again, I'd say being picky, you know, if I was given this at a restaurant or something, you know, I'd be happy with it. Yeah. However, knowing, we're just looking to see if we can mm -hmm. push it further. Yeah, because um, aromatics in the whole bean itself actually is important too, to identify kind of where that roast level lies. And it does smell slightly grassy, slightly underdeveloped, and we both know when it can smell like that, that means there's a little more potential in the bean. And even though this is nice now, we think we can get it better. So let's go brew the next one. So here we have a 14.9% weight loss. Like I said before, weight loss is kind of like how I determine just the most scientific way, um, quick way for me to say what the roast level is. But I mix that with sight and sound, how dark is the bean, um, and for actually during the roast, hearing first crack and measuring the time around first crack is an important part of that process as well. But 14.9% is what we're kind of um, thinking about right now as far as roast level and tasting. The previous one was 13.8%, uh, is that right? Yes, 13.8, so we're moving on to 14.9, which I already did once, but that was a couple of days ago, so I'm excited to try it again. Again, it's very hot. We'll start with the aromatics, talk about it a little bit here. Not as sweet, right? Right, right, right. Maybe it's still too hot, but uh, oh, I don't know. Actually, comparing, just smelled again, and it we'll like a much sweeter smell on the second go. Yeah, it's as far as actually like smelling the coffee. Um, short, shallow breaths in, breathe out with your mouth below the cup, and to hold your hand over the cup 
so that you're really getting no in outside influence as you smell. That's gonna give you kind of like the truest form of kind of analyzing the aromatics, smelling your coffee. Yeah, so still getting like some caramel, something going on in the aromatics. Hmm, that's better. I would say just off, right off the bat, it's tasting better. more complete. More complete, yeah. Yeah, more it's... complete. So yeah, everything is the same about this. It's the same exact coffee, the same bean, just a different batch that I roasted a little bit darker. That's really what it's come down to, just a little bit darker. And what that really means in the roaster is maybe another 15 to 30 seconds, like actually, that's all it can really come down to sometimes. When you're talking about, you know, hundreds of degrees, 400 something degrees in the roaster, whatever it may have been at the time, um, 15 seconds can mean underdeveloped or not. Yeah, I would say at this point, comparing it to the last one, the the grassiness is, is gone. Gone. And this is yeah. the coffee now, I feel like, showing its full form. Um, I'm gonna let you go, but there is um, one very specific taste note that I gave this that I do think still fits, but go on, I wanna hear what, what else you think. Yeah, I can the the darkness is a little bit more, you know. Mm -hmm. There is a the line is still there, but a little less, right? Yeah, I mean it just it peeks through, you know. It's just, just a little. It's, it's like a nice nice hint. It's not not a main part of it, or right. not a main component. Component, yeah. but uh, but it's just nice there. Just that after, or it's just in there, you get a little fruit citrus. Yeah, and I think that's attributed to the range of the altitude here because we've got 1200 to 1900. I'm not exactly sure the actual harvest process, like some of the beans come from 1200, some of them come from 1900. I have no idea what that effect is, what that process is like. When the farm can say 1200 to 1900, if you're getting a bean from the higher end of the elevation on that actual farm, does it taste different than the 1200 meter bean on the same farm? I don't know. I would love to dig into that. If you know, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, if you've had a bean that's 1200 to 1900 or some wide range, and you've had a lot of different variations of it, maybe you're a roaster yourself and you've had it a bunch of times, tell me what's your experience with these wide ranging altitude beans? Because I think they lend to some, some wide complexity in both like the earthy caramel nutty range, but reaching into those higher acidity, limey, you know, citrusy flavors. So I, I think it's a little less limey because it's a little more dark, but it is still there. Yeah, and maybe more cocoa is coming through yeah. to make up for that. Uh huh. Which, th this is definitely better than the last one, just overall. Yeah, I, yeah, I other, agree. Yeah, so. yeah. Right away, I, I, I noted that. Now, the taste note that I actually put on my bags that I I still agree with, I put toasted marshmallow. Toasted marshmallow. Give it a try. Give it a thought. I got it because of the caramel, really, honestly. And kind of the cocoa part of that lent to just this general sweetness, but not super sweet like a like a high acidity sweetness, you know what I mean? Right. It's I can see that. It's maybe, does a marshmallow maybe have more of a vanilla taste or? Uh, probably, but that's this kind is, of why I but this toasted has, car marshmallow. Right, right. You kind of burn out some of that right. initial sweetness. And yeah, yeah. You're left that's with it. some of the caramel burnt sugar taste, right? If I think of more a, a campfire mm. marshmallow yeah. that you just roasted. Yeah. Just lightly done or something, or mm -hmm. just, it has, yeah. That's, that's what came to mind almost immediately when I tried this two days ago, three days ago. Um, and I told Lisa, um, my wife, and she, she completely agreed. She's like, yeah, that's great. We should run with it. And I did. Um, I still agree. So I'm holding, holding true to that. Toasted marshmallow, cocoa, caramel, still kind of there. All, I mean, 
we're really talking about subtleties here. So we're going to go over kind of the same things a couple of times here. It's just what, what little things do change that add up to kind of eventually being the best that this can be. Um, and I think taking that line down just a little bit, but it still being there is important and actually, um, propping up the better properties of this coffee, which I think are the cocoa caramel properties that are kind of popping up a little yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 now that you say marshmallow, it, it's one of those, once you have a word for what you're drinking, mm -hmm. it, it kind of can make more sense. And it, it's not like exactly like marshmallow, but it's like, it, it tastes very similar, almost like the mouth feel of it has some of that yeah, just very good, very solid. Um, uh, I would be happy drinking this as an everyday. No problem with that. Um, let's go through the wheel. So floral, kind of the same, right? Right. Pretty much nothing there right. for floral. I'll give it a half. I don't know what I gave it last time, but I would say it's appropriate. Citrus. Uh, what we gave it like a. What did, or, what did we do before? Was floral up before? Um, I thought floral was up. Oh, was it up? Yeah. Oh, it was. It was up uh, like one and a half. Yeah, yeah. I'd say it's, it's, so, it's, it's but I'd say it come down just one, a little. Like so a one. Up to the one mark. It's yeah. still yeah. present in the aftertaste. Citrus, um, kind of the same, right? Yeah. Kind of toned down just a little bit the right. same with floral. <clears throat> no spicy. Not as sour, but still as right. citrus. I agree. Um, not, uh, maybe a little tiny bit of earthy, like a half. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit. It's not nothing. <clears throat> Cocoa, uh, it's up there, man. It's like even more, right? So I would give it like a three and a half. Yeah. Nutty, n not really, right? No, no. Maybe like a half if it's not nothing. I, 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 it's kind of, yeah, maybe just a half. A hint. It's, it's hard just to The hintiest hint. Um, no smokiness, really. That's no. what we said right before. Uh, and then berry, yet again, no berry. Yeah, I mean, it looks generally about the same. I'm very happy with it. Now we have one more for this guy, this Costa Rica. And it is about a half a percent darker. And I believe that came to about another 15 or 30 seconds in the roaster before the beans were dropped to be cooled. Um, so a little darker yet. I'd like to try it and we'll go over it. So let's get to that brew. Costa Rica Terrazzo number three, 15.6% uh, as opposed to the 14.8%, so almost a full percent darker. Um, again, that means another 15 to 30 seconds in the roaster. That can mean developed, overdeveloped, underdeveloped. Really, it's a pretty sensitive procedure. All right. So once again, we start with the aromatics. Pretty same, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sweet cocoa caramel. Maybe a slight darker smell, but I can't, it's, it's, it's very hard. subtle. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty similar. Very similar. Start tasting. Definitely a little darker. I didn't pick up on it in the aroma, really. Like the darkness difference, the roast difference, and the taste right away. The lime has been squashed. Squashed. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. yeah. It, it's there in in, in, ex, in a subtle way. Super but, subtle. But the other one had a more, you'd get this spike of lime, kind of. I would hold off, take a couple more sips as it cools. That's that high acidity that can show up when it cools. Mm. But yeah, initially right away, you can taste it's a little darker. You can taste that high acidity has been kind of squashed down for sure. And maybe just a little bit of smokiness. Maybe just a little bit. It, it's become fairly consistent, I think. Yeah. Overall. Uh, like the, the range has narrowed. Yes, yeah, yeah. Just in that, what, eighth of a percent, you know? Is that, yeah. is that the difference? Or? Uh, yeah, about, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So just that, that small difference, and we're on a 
a completely different taste here. Yeah, yeah. My job is to try to get these nuances kind of in this perfected level. And I'll never be perfect. I'll never claim to be perfect, but I'm always trying to get closer. Um, and I think this gets closer. I think either the last one or this one is exactly where I'd want this coffee. Yeah, it, it, so this one, it has a little bit of, smoking, of smokiness that comes through. And it's more consistent. If you're someone who doesn't like something being as floral or fruity, and you just want something that's a little bit more consistent, maybe a little smokiness, this hits all of those notes. Right. If you wanted more citrus, more, a little more floral, a, a lighter cup than the the previous one, the, what was it, 14? 14, 14.8. 14.8 is probably, is, that was good. Yeah. yeah. I would say that the body is a little more like average than light this mm -hmm. time. Yeah, yep. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. I don't think the roast level really has a lot to do with that. So maybe something about the way I agitated for this in the V60 changed the body just a little bit. That's not a big issue. That can be something that varies often with people, definitely with pour overs. Um, not so much with an automatic machine. That's gonna be pretty consistent. I would say, this is probably more like a light, lighter bodied coffee more often than not. The acidity I would say is more like average than smoother than average this time. Right. Slightly it, higher. It kind of has a, the, the smokiness, you can just, it kind of builds up a little bit on your tongue, and your mouth and that. It's I'm not, not going to tell that people much. that this is a smooth coffee, but I will say it's not very acidic. No, no, it's, it's not. It's just kind of average. Right. right. Acidity. Yeah. Yeah. Average acidity, average body, more consistent. The yep. range of flavors has narrowed. It has become uh, easy to drink, I would yes, say. Yeah. This was a 15.6%. 15.6%. Between here and here is what I would aim for if I roasted this again. And I will because I have like six, seven, eight more pounds of it. I will be aiming for about 15%, I think. Uh, I would say that is uh, a range of a safe area for me. I try to hit between like 2% markers, 14%, 15%. If I can get between there, um, generally we're pretty safe with just about every bean. I haven't come across a coffee that's quite as delicate to say that, let's say a 15% is great and a 14% is just pretty bad. That hasn't happened to me yet. Um, and there are other markers to identify just how developed or underdeveloped a coffee is. But I would say this coffee, just fine, anywhere between 15 and 16, because um, we are talking about the high end of 14 versus the middle end of 15. It's anywhere between 15 and 16. And even if it's below 15 by a little bit, it's probably okay. I'm happy with this. We've got one more coffee to test and it's not Costa Rica. I wanted to just branch off of that try something a little wild because um, this one is really exciting for me. It has remained my my favorite coffee personally since we first had it. It's an Ethiopia Saidamo, uh, the Dorado Bombay. It is tropical, refreshing. We'll get more into it. Let's get that brew going now. All right guys, I'm excited about this one. This is, um, if you're familiar with Ethiopia, uh, you might know that they are one of the biggest exporters of natural process coffees. Um, that you can find some Ethiopian washed, uh, but natural process coffees, um, they sit and ferment as a full cherry on a raised bed uh, for weeks at a time, sometimes a couple of months even, uh, to allow the seed inside, which is the coffee bean, to absorb some of the natural juices, the moisture inside of the bean. They get locked in. Um, the high density nature of it allows them to keep that flavor all the way through the roast. And that's what creates this amazing wide, wild range of flavor profiles you can find out of Ethiopia. This Saidamo, the Dorado Bombay, um, I believe that is the farm or the producer, um, this is just like the wildest, fruitiest coffee that I've ever had. And it is one of my favorites. I've come to love it a lot. And this is a 9.9% weight loss coffee, which is one of the lightest roasts I've ever done. 
but the consistency is there. It doesn't look too light at all. Um, and just, it smells of just this incredible explosive fruitiness of all kinds of berries. It's wonderful. Um, so let's get the pour going, get these aromatics. I feel like I can smell the fruitiness from here. I mean, the, the steam. The, the whole beans smelled fruity. When I ground it, it smelled incredible. And here we are again. Yeah, just like this berry sweetness. It's, yeah. Very oh. aromatic. I'm gonna write this down. I believe I roasted this on the 17th, just like the others. Let's give a first sip here. Wow. Okay. Pretty sour, right? Like, it actually like, hit my tongue and kind of like contracted my tongue, my cheek muscles to, cause like almost sourness. It's there, but it's not. Not in a bad way. No, no, it's no. good. Uh, sometimes I would get that in a grassy cough mm -hmm. and you'd be like, like it wouldn't, that wouldn't be as pleasant. This is pleasant. <laughs> this is, a, it's kind of extreme. Like so high on the complexity, acidity, I mean, it's n just so you guys know, it is nothing like what we just had out of Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it's on the sweeter side, we're talking about a high acidic berry profile where the Costa Rica had no berry influence in the taste whatsoever. So it's a very, very different coffee. This is also one of those coffees that can change drastically as it cools down. So again, we'll take our time analyzing this. You never wanna rush through a coffee when it's nice and hot because your taste buds aren't quite as perceptive to the range of flavors. Um, we'll let it cool down and we'll continue to talk about it. I'm gonna write some more notes here. Um, so yeah, the aroma, just explosively berry. Uh, the altitude, 2050 meters, I believe is the altitude. I've done this one a few times. So let's talk about body and general acidity here. Light in body. Yep. Yeah. yeah, very light. Very Not light. quite tea light. Not tea, but it's... Kind of the same body level as Costa Rica. Yeah. Not quite as... Costa Rica had, had some kind of silky smoothness to it that I don't think this has. That might be with, yeah, with that like cocoa right. thing going on. This is a little bit, uh, it's light. It, it's... A little drier, right? If that, yeah, you know, almost of. like a wine sense of being dry, mm -hmm. right? Uh, oh, that's body. Uh, acidity. I mean, we're talking about a high acidity coffee in the in the in the in the way that these flavors present themselves. Um, and I would typically say that that is a the flavors are a result of high acidity, but there's the perception of what that acidity kind of feels like. And I would, I would say average, <laughs> again, yeah, yeah, average yeah. acidity, not super smooth, um, but not a high acidity coffee. And before we do the wheel, let's talk about our general notes. What are you, what are you experiencing here? It is a berry explosion. Yeah. Also some citrus I'm feeling just, you know, it, it has the berries, but then it has just a little zip, which also might be, it's with the berry, you know? Sure. So yeah, a little, a little berry, uh, definitely a lot of berry. A lot of berry. Um, a hint of citrus. I could definitely see, see that. And actually, I feel like that's there because it's a 9.9% .9 because we've roasted this plenty of times before and we've never really called out citrus. Mm -hmm. I think that has something to do with the very delicate roast mm -hmm. I've done with this. And I, I kind of like that. It really adds oh, yeah, to the, yeah. to the. There's range. berry and there's, there's an extra zip on top of it. And it's just. If you want a, a light body coffee that has um, a berry explosion yeah. flavors. Um, if I'm gonna get specific, I think raspberry is appropriate here. Mm -hmm. um, a little dryness yeah. is there. Yeah, I Not mean, that bad, but it's like, it's just part of the, it's, it's that berry yeah. flavor. So when we, when we start talking like this, this is how you kind of get down to the specifics of what you might put on a bag if you're doing this yourself. When you talk about, oh, it's kind of dry, like a dry wine. Oh, I can kind of get raspberry. And you go down that, that trail a little bit. 
that's when you can kind of say, okay, I'm comfortable saying dried raspberry on the bag. Mm -hmm. What else are we talking about here? Because we're, we're talking about the sweetness and the berry. Um, let, might as well just go right to the, the wheel here so we can kind of expand on this. So floral, I would say it's there, but it's being covered up by so much fruitiness. Yeah, and you know, maybe just like a, a one. On the low end, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it wasn't so fruity, it would probably be more. Right, right, right. Um, citrus, I would say like one and a half. Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's present. Spicy, none. None. Not at all. Earthy, not at all. No. Cocoa? If it's Very there, little. it's low. It's yeah. like a half, half notch. Yeah. Yep. Nutty, no. Not at all. Smoky, not at nope, all. No. Nope. Berry, I mean, it, it, if there was any coffee that just goes right to the max, it's this one, right? Yeah, yeah. It, I, you, you can't get any more. He berry really flavor. doesn't get much more <laughs> berry flavor than this. So that's our wheel, and it is one of the more extreme wheels I've ever done. And I'll just reiterate this is for me. This isn't me saying what this coffee is. This is just how I roast it, how I brewed it, how I perceive it, and how I'd like to standardize it for me and for my customers. Um, this isn't to say that if you buy this coffee, this is what your wheel would look like because there's so many variables in there involved with how you roast it, how you brew it, how you perceive it. Everyone's perception is different. So this is why I like to do it with multiple people so that we can kind of combine our thoughts and get a general consensus. I recommend that as well. Find someone to drink some coffee with, just in general. Yeah, this is um, this is quite the wheel here, but I like it. Good graph, very berry, a little bit of citrus. Um, in that sense, it's not super complex, right? It's not reaching into earthiness. It's not reaching anywhere but these high berry notes. Right. Um, but it's super enjoyable if that's the expectation. That's a big part of it. And that's why I'm so careful about this is when you put something on the bag, you give someone expectations. When I put toasted marshmallow on the bag, I have to really think hard about that and go, is someone gonna perceive that? And maybe they don't, um, and that's on me. But if it's the first thing that comes to mind and I can't get it out of my head, it's what I wanna put on the bag. Um, and I have, to be, I have to be thoughtful about that. For this one, I'm definitely putting dried raspberries light citrus in the bag because i don't see how someone could brew this and get much of anything else you know what i mean right right yeah any other final thoughts about this coffee before we wrap up i'm really surprised that what was it again 9.9 9.9 so about 10 yeah. percent yeah, yeah. I, that it's developed enough yeah me too and yeah that is excellent i attribute that to um, just generally staying very aware of the fact that I'm still learning as a roaster. So I'm trying all these different things all the time. And when I think I've got something just the way I want it, I'm not afraid to kind of try something different and see where it goes, right? So that's it for today. Um, just a quick wrap up. What I really wanted to show you was a comparative tasting video. That's really what I do kind of on a weekly basis. Every time I roast, usually there's something new to try. And if it's not a new bean, it's a new um, roast profile, right? I'm always trying some new stuff because like I said, I'm not perfect. I'm gonna continue to just try and learn everything I can. I'm a home roaster like a lot of you guys. I just happen to feel confident enough to bring this stuff to my local farmer's markets. Um, but that doesn't mean that I stop trying to learn how to get better at this. Comparative tasting is about the best way you can learn to grow um, because taste is king. If you're not tasting your coffee, you're doing it wrong. Um, and I don't know how you be a coffee roaster without tasting it anyway. That's kind of defeats the point. Thanks for stopping by today. If you have experience with comparative tasting, um, what do you standardize with? What do you guys do? Um, let me know in the comments below. We can start a conversation here. We talked about some other things before, um, mid, low, high altitude stuff. When you get a wide range of altitude beans, um, you know, talk about that too. Uh, what's your experience with that wide ranging altitude? I'd love to hear more about that. Uh, hit a like button below, subscribe if you're new here. I'd love for you to stick around. Um, thanks for being here. Appreciate you guys. See you next time. This is good. Mm -hmm. I, I I would say it is really 
It's what if, it's hard to tell what you're looking for. But it that is, is the ultimate light berry coffee. It really is. Um, and for how light it is, like.